In this video, I will demonstrate how to paint these watercolor pumpkins. Trim your watercolor paper to the same size as your printer paper. You can download this image from my website. The link will be provided below. There are a few different ways you can transfer the image onto your watercolor paper. For this method, all you need is a pencil, a pen, and some tape. Flip over your image and color in the back where you can see where the lines are. It helps if you hold it up to a window. Use the side of your pencil to fill in the back and then tape it to your paper. Use your pen to trace the image, pushing gently to transfer the graphite to the watercolor paper. So to start with my, my painting my pumpkins, I'm going to use my size 12 round brush and we're going to start with this back pumpkin. I'm thinking I'm going to make this one sort of white, this one maybe more grayish and this one sort of a greenish color. So when you think about the way these will reflect off of each other, this one's going to be pulling in a tiny bit of color from these since it's white. So we're going to start by getting it wet with our brush, just water, and outlining our pumpkin. Once we completely cover it in water, we're going to use some of the wet on wet technique. This helps the paint to flow really well. Okay, so white actually has a lot more color in it than you think. So we're going to get some of this brown, which I used just by mixing a few different colors. I pulled from my brown. There was some, already some paint on my palette some pinks and greens. It's just kind of a dirty color. We're going to start along the edges. One thing you have to remember with watercolors is it always dries lighter. So it might look pretty dark when you're working, but remember it's going to look lighter once it dries. Over here I'm going to leave a bit of white, that's where the light is coming from. Now we're going to go in and add some of the reflecting colors. So we decided this one was going to be sort of a greenish color. So let's go in, this is sap green, there's a little bit of blue in there, and here's some of my brown I have next to it already on my palette. Gently touch the wet paint already and it should flow. Now that's a pretty harsh line, so what I can do is I can dip my paintbrush back in my water, kind of go over it with water and just help it to blend a little. And you can see I already covered up my white space I was trying to keep. So you can pull some paper towel off and go in and dab. The trick with watercolors is remembering to leave the white. So you can't really paint white with watercolor. You can use other types of paint on top of it, but watercolor doesn't quite work that way. So we have some of that in there. I'm going to add a little bit more color on the bottom while it's still wet. Let's add some shadow to the side. This is the bottom layer, so I will be painting more on top of it. Okay, now this pumpkin we decided was going to be kind of a grayish color, so I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my black. Add more water to it. 
and add this in to the white pumpkin. Okay. Now we're gonna go move on while this one's drying. Let's move on to our green pumpkin. Start by getting it wet. This Princeton brush I'm using is synthetic, so it's quite a bit cheaper than by going with some kind of animal hair. But I actually really like how much water it can hold. It's linked in my watercolor kit sets. Okay, so we got it wet. Now we're going to go in and pick up some green. I want it to have a little more brown in it than just green. So I mix. You can get this color by mixing one of your browns in the kits with a tiny bit of black. This color specific is just sapia, which you can google for M. Graham. Let's start by adding the dark color back here. If you're not sure where to put the shadows, you can look at the reference picture for this post and you can look at it while you paint, which can help. Just putting some water right here to blend those two sides. Can add some darker at the bottom, maybe add a little more brown to the very base. Remember where you want to leave the white. So I'm going to kind of outline it now so I don't forget. While we let this one dry, we're going to move on to our third pumpkin. Start by getting your pumpkin wet again. We can add in some of our grays. Black is a color you have to be careful with because a lot of times paintings look better if you use a combination of colors and not just pure black. So in this case, I have some black and green mixed together to give it a little more dimension. Go in with some darker black, tap to the bottom. Now we're going to go in and start adding some dimension to the other pumpkins. I like to use my smaller brush. This is a size 6. So this one's white, so we're going to keep it a little more neutral in the colors. But we still want to have some definition, so maybe I'll use a little gray, a little brown. and throw in a little green if I want. We're going to start putting the lines that help give the pumpkin some shape. You can get just plain water and soften the edge by touching the paint you just put down. If it feels too dark, you can always go in with a wet brush and pick a little up, too. Soften the edge. Water. We 
you should be able to see your pencil marks through which will help you keep the lines going in the right direction. Just going to keep doing this throughout the other pumpkins. I'll put this on a faster mode. Next we're going to put in some drop shadows and we're going to start by getting our brush wet and underlining the pumpkins where we want our shadows to be. Remember the light is sort of coming from this direction so it's going to tend to stay on this side of the pumpkin and sort of light coming from above so that the shadow drops below. So we have water on here and we're going to go and pick up some paint. And I want to try to pick up the paint that was in the pumpkin. So I'm going to add some grays in here. You can just touch right under the pumpkin. It should spread throughout that water you just added. If you don't touch the bottom line it will help it from getting a harsh line. Then we're going to go in and add some here. So gray, I can add a little brown if I want. And then we want a touch of green in this shadow. Not too much. Now, I'm going to let this dry and if it still feels too light, I'll go back and I'll do the same thing. So for this part of the stem on the pumpkin, we're going to go in and grab some of our brown. And we're going to start with the darker side. So we'll paint a little heavier. Follow the lines from your transfer. Thin lines here. And we'll go in on this side. This is going to be sort of your shadow side. So it's going to be a lot darker. Can add some extra pigment towards the base while it's still wet. dried a little more than I wanted so I'm going to pick up some water in my brush and help it blend. Okay now we're going to go in. I'm going to add more water to the brown I was just using. Maybe pick up a little more green. And this is mostly dry so I'm going to go in and paint right over it. Now if I want, I can take an even smaller brush and go back in and add some really dark details, like maybe if I want to have a little more weight on the bottom of that. My shadow was a tiny wet, so I can pick up that extra pigment with some water in my brush. I'm going to add a little more definition here with some black. And 
and pick up some brown for this green one. If I want, I can go in and add some more of the lines from the pumpkins. I might keep this one a little softer. Or if I want to go in and add some really fine lines here. go back in those lines, so adding water to my brush and smooth them out. And there you have it! Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.